The Prophet has said, The Mahdi will be of my stock and will have a broad forehead and a prominent nose. He will fill the earth with equity and justice as it was filled with oppression and tyranny. And he will rule for seven years. Respected brothers and sisters and dearest viewers, wherever you may be, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Many religions speak of a Messiah. But who is the Mahdi who the Muslims refer to? Is he mentioned in the Quran? Is he mentioned in the Hadith? What is his role? And what are the signs of the reappearance? We will be discussing all of these over the next five nights and do join us uh, till the 15th of Sha'ban as we delve into this broad topic. Inshallah, everything you've asked, the Sayyid, will be discussed in this uh, series of, uh, of live shows. Do text in your WhatsApp questions to the number down below. It will be in the lower third. But rest assured, everything will be discussed as this topic is very, very broad. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on all our social medias. They will be in the lower third down below. But without further ado, the Imam, Imam Al-Mahdi, Sahib Al-Zaman with none other than Dr. Sayyid Amman Naqshwani. Sayyid, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. Very well, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. alhamdulillah. Now, Sayyidna, the, the question on everyone's mind, have you seen a sudden surge in the discussion concerning Imam Al-Zaman? Oh, without a doubt, I think I've been inundated with messages recently. Mm. Uh, with people asking questions concerning the Mahdi. And the Mahdi was always uh, a discussion which interested Muslims and non-Muslims alike, as in there are academic works on the Mahdi by non-Muslim professors. But you also have at the same time many great Muslim scholars who have written about the Mahdi. Uh, since the time of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family. And as for the recent surge, you've had rabbis, you've had priests, and you've had Muslim scholars who have come together to try and discuss the philosophy of the Mahdi and the position of the Mahdi. Mm -hmm. uh, as we know, all those Abrahamic religions all have a belief in a Messiah or discussions concerning Messianism within their literature, and especially referring towards the Day of Judgment and end times. I think the sudden surge in discussions concerning the Mahdi possibly emerges from two angles. One angle is the obvious angle, COVID-19, mm -hmm. which has affected so many around the world. And our prayers are with everybody around the world, those who've lost lives, those who are going through difficulties, and especially our workers on the front line, such as doctors and nurses who have been absolutely unbelievable, as well as staff at supermarket. What's happened is that definitely with COVID-19, there's been a rise in discussions concerning the meaning of life, the philosophy of trial and tribulation, the strength of the human being in terms of their internal, let alone their external, mm -hmm. the physical body and how much it can handle, but also the spiritual body mm -hmm. or the spiritual existence of the human being. So COVID-19 has led to a rise in discussions concerning eschatology generally, mm -hmm. be it discussions concerning signs of the Day of Judgment or discussions concerning... Uh, certain figures who are mentioned in relation to signs of the Day of Judgment, uh, or discussion concerning our relationship with the ideologies or the frameworks that we subscribe to, that we submit to, or in a certain way that we identify with. Mm -hmm. I think maybe on a more trivial note, the Messiah on Netflix also brought about a certain amount of questioning before COVID-19 <clears throat> became yeah. so prominent on the scene of the media. Mm -hmm. 
um, the Messiah on Netflix, brings about this discussion which is definitely there in Abrahamic, and I would say non-Abrahamic literature as well. Mm -hmm. That if a person wants to go, for example, to the world of Buddhism or Zoroastrianism mm -hmm. uh, or Hinduism, these discussions concerning a Messiah, a Messiah who comes to humanity in the way other messiahs came to humanity at their very darkest moments. Mm. Someone anointed, whether physically or spiritually, to guide mankind from the depths of darkness and despair, mm. from certain trials that saw them have moments of fear and hunger and loss of life. And so the Messiah on Netflix really aroused a lot of discussion. In some cases, people began to re-examine Christ and the Antichrist, mm -hmm. Mahdi and the Dajjal, mm -hmm. Jerusalem, Syria, the Golan Heights. All of these come together in one Netflix series where people suddenly begin to ask questions, how would I know the Messiah's truthfulness and trustworthiness? What if he's just blagging? Could be a blagger, could be a fake, could be an imposter. While many people are quick to dismiss certain programs or movies, I believe that sometimes they are a reflection of what we are thinking. Mm -hmm. We as a society start to think about these things, about the reality of these things and how they affect our life and our family's lives. Now, when I'm living in this world right now, I'm asking myself a question. That where are we heading as human beings? Mm -hmm. And how do we get out of a trial and tribulation? Is it us who have control of our destiny? Is it written that somebody else will lead us to salvation? Mm -hmm. So, if you were to put a combination of COVID-19 with the Messiah on Netflix, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a coincidence that you've got this surge of questions, inquisitive minds, who have suddenly begun to open up books which we as a believing Abrahamic community may have neglected. Mm -hmm. We may have neglected the discussions of revelations. Um, we may have dis you know, neglected the discussions of the righteous and the struggles that they went through. Or discussions of eschatology, be we Jew you know, Jews or Muslims or Christians. But certainly now more than ever, we as humanity are all united as nations in trying to solve an issue. Mm -hmm. My friend in China and my friend in Italy, my friend in Spain or my friend in the UK are all sitting there saying, put all of the xenophobia, Islamophobia, racist issues and tendencies and opinions that we had. We need somebody to get us out of this mess. Yeah. This is a mess. <clears throat> it's brought about a difficulty. What's the solution? Mm. Rarely has human being or has the human being been in a certain period of time where they're all wondering what next. Mm -hmm. And so that surge, Minhal, that you speak about in the questions that are being asked is understandable mm -hmm. because it's real now. Yeah. It can also be called surreal, but it's real. It's humbled us, yeah. but it's also made us want to get in touch with the sacred. Mm -hmm. The historical is no longer dead. Mm -hmm. There's an energy to the discussions of the Taoist, of the Confucian, of the Buddhist, of the Judeo-Christian and of the Muslim. Mm -hmm. An energy that has not been galvanized in such a way, one may argue, since the day of the pre-modern in some cases. And so, I would hope in the next five nights, the viewers join us on a journey. Mm. Yep. And tonight may be more of a monologue than a dialogue. The next mm -hmm. few nights is going to be back and forth between myself and yourself and the viewers. Mm -hmm. But tonight I would say 
is more of a, a monologue in trying to open up the future discussions. And mm -hmm. I know everyone's looking forward to discussions on proving the birth of the Mahdi. Yeah, is he yeah, Muhammad yeah. son of Al Hassan al Askari? Is he Muhammad son of Abdullah? What's the discussions concerning the minor Ghaiba, the major Ghaiba? Is the, where is the Imam? Is he married? Does he have children? Is he lonely? Mm. Does he have feelings in this period of the occultation? What will happen in terms of signs of his reappearance? Are they written and set on stone? Do sure. we have an effect? Do we have an active role or a passive role mm. in terms of the reappearance of the Imam? Should we just sit back? What is intadar? All of these things are going to come. Yeah. And the government of the Imam and the role of the Imam, we're going to go through all of these. Mm -hmm. But tonight, I believe there needs to be a reset in terms of our general understanding of the development of belief and history in relation to this subject. Now, as the Sayyid mentioned that um, I know he wanted to start this first show as a, uh, as a monologue rather than a dialogue, contrary to the next four nights. So do join us till the 15th of Sha'ban. Many, many points that the Sayyid raised uh, that will all be discussed, inshallah. But Sayyid, uh, I'm going to hand it to you uh, in the first show uh, for, for your monologue. Um, would you kindly explain the development of the concept of a Messiah from God? I believe discussions concerning the Mahdi need us to return to a one-on-one -on -one class. In terms of understanding God, His mercy, his justice, those who represented God and how that representation developed, as well as certain terminologies which I believe we need to know the history and development and evolution of, such mm -hmm. as Sahib al Amr, the master of the affair, Sahib al Zaman, master of the time, Hujja, the proof, mm -hmm. Muntadar, the awaited. Khalifa, representative, Imam, leader, Ghaiba, occultation. Mm. All of these terms are going to be fundamental in our understanding. Let me begin, please. And I believe if the viewers follow me on this first episode, mm. the rest becomes extremely clear cut. Central in Islamic belief is God. Allah. Wajib al wujud the necessary existent, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call. We recognize that God is unseen, cannot be seen. And he is the knower of the unseen. And he has the keys to the unseen. unseen. And he is the knower of the world, of the seen and the unseen. unseen. Yeah. In Islamic belief, therefore, maybe similar to Jewish belief, but maybe unlike Christianity, the whole idea that God can ever be put into an image or can be seen is not part of Islamic belief. Although you may have certain groups who had anthropomorphic tendencies, mm -hmm. but there is this concept that God is the unseen. And that God is the knower of the world of the unseen and the seen. And that belief in the unseen is a fundamental belief in Islam, beginning with God. We say that God, Alim al Ghayb wa Shahada, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the knower of the seen and the unseen. And that, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif la mim, thalika al-kitab la rayba fi hudan lil muttaqin, alladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb. This word ghayb is huge. Why is it huge? Because the belief in the unseen mm -hmm. is one of the pillars of the God conscious in Islam. The Quran is a guide to the muttaqeen. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. Then afterwards, wa yuqeemuna salat. And let's say, giving away from themselves in charity. Therefore, God, our belief in God is a Lord who cannot be seen. And even when our great saints were asked, 
Have you seen God? Imam Ali السلام, would reply, How can I believe in a Lord who I have not seen? Mm-hmm. I may not have seen him with the eyes. vision of the eyes, but with the certainty of the, certainty of the heart. Aql, intellect. Iman is in the heart. Ta'ala. Belief. But also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the knower of the seen and the unseen means that there are two dimensions from which we can still gain benefit. World of the physical and the world of the spiritual. The mulk and the malakut. That which is the world of the jism for example and that which is the world of the ruh. So already from the outset in Islamic belief there is a belief that you may still benefit from that which cannot be seen. Mm-hmm. I benefit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Mm-hmm. I don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True. But I benefit. Yeah. Because I've recognized that I'm not just purely physical. Mm-hmm. There are certain things the naked eye can see. The hand may touch, the ears may hear. But there, are, there is a world which is the world of ghaib. Mm-hmm. And in that world of ghaib, sometimes I get access to that world of ghaib. Mm-hmm. A, in my belief in God. B, in witnessing the work of God. Mm-hmm. See, sometimes even if I go to something like the world of dreams. Yeah. World of dreams could just be adghath. As Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam talks of, sticks in a haystack, a mess. Mm-hmm. Could be a, one of those messages from Satan or it could be something that could happen. But one thing I know is that the world of dreams offers me insight that not all that can be seen is all that exists. Come on. There may be existence that cannot be seen, but they exist. Not only do those existence exist, belief in them in the world of unseen is a sign that I have God consciousness. And not only that, me not seeing their benefit doesn't mean there is no benefit. Me not seeing the emanation of mercy from the necessary existent doesn't mean that there is no mercy from the existence of the necessary existent. Mm -hmm. would be unjust of God to tell me then, having created me, to worship him Mm. or her. There's no gender to the Lord, it's genderless. Yeah. And not provide me with role models on the earth who show me how to perfect and how to actualize my potential. Mm -hmm. Therefore, not only is God the knower of the seen and the unseen, the physical and spiritual, he creates the human who is made up of jism and ruh. For he creates a spirit and breathes that spirit into the human being. And God made clear that this earth will never be devoid of a hujjah of mine. Mm -hmm. So Adam was his first hujjah on earth. Mm -hmm. The human beings had to have a rep of God on the earth. Otherwise the earth would have swallowed its inhabitants. For there is no exemplar who's the medium of God's mercy to reach mankind. Mm -hmm. Even if the community was only four, the earth could not be devoid of a hujjah. Adam, therefore, alayhi salam, highlighted that God chooses a representative who acts as a guide for the human at all times. There is always a rep of God on the earth, a hujjah of God on the earth. And that in the Islamic conception of guidance, 
That person, Adam, is Ka'bat al-Iman. He's literally the, you want to see the embodiment of Iman on the earth, Adam. He is also Imam al-Insi wal-Jan. He's a leader for the humans and the jinn. So what is he? Adam. Ka'bat al-Iman. Very axis, center of belief. Imam al insi wal John, the jinn have a day of judgment. Mm -hmm. Again, the world of the unseen and the seen. We're talking two realms here. Yeah. I've never met a jinn. I've certainly met humans who act like some, but never met a jinn. But one thing I realized that jinn is the world of the unseen. Yeah. Adam is the archetype. Mm. Who is Ka'bat al-Iman, Sahib al-Asr was Zaman of his time. He's the master of the time. Yeah. To the extent that if Allah wants him, he'll give him the power to even control time. Mm -hmm. Same way his Lord later on showed that certain prophets could even create with God's permission. Yeah. He's also the Khalifa. Look at the terminologies we've used already. Mm -hmm. Adam is the Hujjah of Allah. Yeah. He's the Ka'ba of Iman. He's Sahib al-Asr well, was Zaman. Imam al-Insi wal Jan. And he's Khalifa of who? Ar-Rahman. Inni ja'alun fil ardi Khalifa. I am sending a Caliph on the earth because this earth, while this earth is there, it can never be devoid of a representative of mine. One way or the other. The same way I'm a guide to the human being, possibly in the unseen, my representative may be in the unseen. But my representative may also be seen. There may be moments you are lucky enough to get a glimpse of the seen or the unseen. Adam, alayhi salam, therefore, is sahib al-asr wa zaman. Khalifa of the Rahman. He is also imam of the ins and the jal. While Adam is around, there's something which is fundamental. Adam has to be someone chosen by God, but also given the grace of infallibility to guide man. Yeah, of course. Because if I'm going to look at him as the medium of God's grace on earth, he can't be someone who's making mistakes and errors and sinning. Mm. So fundamental is that not only is he the Khalifa of the Rahman, not only is the Hujjah of Allah, not only is he, the sh is he Imam al-Insi wal-Jan, but also he is on a level of being infallible mm -hmm. on earth. Yeah. Of course, in Jannah, he introduced us to another creation, mm. Satan, yeah. Iblis. Now, when he introduced us to Iblis, there was a problem. Because while Iblis asks God, let me live until the day they are raised, mm -hmm. let's say, yeah. God does make a promise which is important for all of us. Mm. There is a waqt which is ma'loom. A certain time you're going to definitely be around for. Yeah. So while shaitan or iblis, Satan is always around, mm. there is always going to be one who is going to try and deviate the message of the prophets. To ensure that society goes into a world of injustice and corruption. Yeah. God, out of his mercy, sends prophets. It is only just of him to send prophets as guide to us. These prophets, of course, go to every land. Mm. They are the hujjah of Allah on earth. Mm. They are masters of their time. Mm. They are masters of the affair of God on earth. They're the most knowledgeable. And they are error-free. We agree on all of that? Agreed. Okay. What's their role, these prophets? Of course, their titles come in different titles. Sometimes they are known as Khalifa. Sometimes Imam. Sometimes Nabi. Sometimes Rasul. Sometimes Hujjah. Sometimes ayah, 
sometimes Bashir, sometimes Nadir, sometimes Dhikr. Their role is that they come with God's signs and some of them may come with a book to ensure that justice is established. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِزَانِ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقَسْتِ We have sent our messengers with clear signs. Mm. And alongside them, we have given them the book and the scales of justice and mizan. Mm. Because the world that you want is a world which is full of qist and adl. Mm. Do you agree? Yeah. Not jor or dhulm. We don't want a world of injustice and oppression. Do you agree? Yeah, of course. So what's the role of the prophets? Qist. Mm. This is a vital word in the conception of the Messiah in Islamic thought. Mm -hmm. Because you quoted earlier yeah. that part of the emergence of the Mahdi mm. is to establish what the other hujaj established or sought to establish. Mm -hmm. The other hujaj of their time, the a'imma of the ins and the jan, the leaders of the ins and the jan, someone might say, call them anbiya. No, no, Ibrahim even became an imam. Yeah. They came So they established justice, equity, whichever translation we want to use. You see, qist, aqsat. You know when someone says to you, why do you buy aqsat in this company? Mm -hmm. Why don't you buy aqsat in this company? And qist, therefore, is when you distribute fairly the shares. Mm -hmm. Ad refers to judgments being made with justice. Do we see yeah. the difference? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes qist in English, they write justice. Mm. Ad in English, they write justice. Justice. Qist. Qistas. You see the scales? Mm. Qistas. Mm, 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 mm. And that. Because there is justice in the way it's balanced. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Qist is to ensure that something is distributed fairly. A society with unequal distribution is an unjust society. Do you agree? I agree. Adala is to ensure that the judgments that are given by society are not oppressive. To ensure that all members of society are innocent until they are proven guilty. Mm -hmm. Not you send people straight to prison without any court case. You kill innocent youth. You destroy the lives of people. The prophets, when the Quran said, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعْهُمُ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمِيزَانِ لِيَقُومَ That was trying to establish for us that the role of these prophets with their respective societies was to ensure that equity and justice was established. Mm. If it's not established, there is a need for a reform, a revamp, or even another messiah to emerge who ensures that we return back to a world of qist and adl and not a world of jor and fasad. Do we agree? Okay. Come on. These prophets are sent everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're sent everywhere. They're sent to China. They're sent to India. Not just the Middle East. Mm -hmm. The prophet was called a Nadir, but for every Qawm there was a Had. Another title. Had. Mm -hmm. Huda. Hidayah. Mahdi. What, how many titles have we discussed now? Khalifa. Imam. Nabi. Rasul. Hujja. Ahad. Mm -hmm. Some of these prophets successfully ensured that justice was established. Some of them, their people were too arrogant to establish. Yep. 
along the way, some of these prophets met personalities who were in the world of the seen and the unseen. Mm -hmm. There are prophets who met prophets who had already gone into the world of the unseen but were still alive. Khadr. Khadr is mentioned in sources of all schools in Islam. Mm -hmm. The Allam al-Majlisi devotes volume 13 of the Bihar with 55 traditions on Khadr and Musa. MashaAllah. Nabi Musa meets Khadr who is this personality who is in the world of occultation, mm -hmm. has been given ilm la dunni, a certain special knowledge, inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that in itself requires a discussion in the forthcoming nights. Mm -hmm. But that prophet like Khidr is someone who went into the world of the unseen and is living until today. There are Muslims who believe that Khidr until today is alive. We have in Shi'i literature Clear discussion of the Prophet and Imam Ali السلام, meeting Khidr on their way to Medina in an Ali where they talk of his appearance, his height, his thick beard and so on. Let alone discussions we may have about Dua Kumail, is it the Dua of Khidr mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Yeah. Those Muslims don't have a problem in the fact that even the forces of good and the forces of evil may live long lives seen and unseen. Iblis is one old guy. Yeah. And sorry to mess about with you, Iblis. I beg you don't, you know, don't start a war against me like you no, probably do every single day. But that Iblis, you ask Muslims, you guys believe in Satan? Yes. Where is he? Oh no, no. You can believe in the unseen. We can't see shaitan. Quran said, yeah. Those who believe in Where's shaitan? I certainly don't know. I know he has soldiers. I don't know. I, I, I can see remnants of how they are, but where's shaitan? Where's this Iblis? How old do you think Iblis is, Minhal? How old do I think he is? I wouldn't have a clue. Old? Pro very yeah, old, quite yeah. Old. yeah. I mean, just that saying that he's prostrated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for God knows how many thousands of years. This guy's old. Yeah. This guy's done 6,000 years of, of, of prostration, mm. of ibadah. He is one old guy. Still alive. Still alive. We can't see him. <clears throat> you know the worst thing about him, uh, Minal? What? You were source of his door and nas. An existent who's lived for thousands of years. We can't see, can whisper bad. Could there be an existent who's lived for over a thousand years who you can't see who could whisper good? Just a thought. Just a thought. The nights are coming, inshallah. Inshallah. Shaitan! Such an old guy. But well, Muslims believe in him. <laughs> Even though Muslims normally talk about people who, who, who you, know, you can only really believe in someone who lives for like 60, 70 years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family lives for 63 years. Imam Ali, 63. Imam Al Hassan lived for 47. And Imam Al Hussein lived for 57. And Sayyidah Zainab lived for 56. You know, okay, and there were companions who lived till about a hundred. Mm -hmm. But anytime you start mentioning anything above that, they might go, well, Salman al-Muhammad is an exception. He sounds like quite an old guy. Mm -hmm. But then we remember that of those prophets, there were some who their da'wah or tabligh alone was 950 years. Forget how old they were. Such as who? Nabi? Nuh alayhi salam. Therefore, there are existence who you can see, there are those you can't see, and they can live for a long time. Very long, yeah. Why? Because if Allah wants to, is it impossible for him? No. no. <laughs> if Allah wants something, he'll say to it, be and it will be. be. 
And there are some of them who went into occultation. Ghadab. Ghaybah. He's in occultation. Mm -hmm. Who else is in occultation? Prophet Isa alayhi salam. There are some who believe that Jesus, son of Mary, mm. went into occultation. Because of the verse in the Quran, a number of verses which we're going to come to when we discuss Jesus and Imam al Mahdi, Ajallah Faja Sharif. Imam, Nubuwa, God's guides, their roles, and Imam al Mahdi, Ajallah Faja Sharif, and his. Leading of Nabi Isa in Salah. What does it highlight about the descendants of Fatima to Zahra I'm going to come to all of this. Don't worry. We have nights coming. You don't want to at the moment. It. At the moment, we're in gear one. <laughs> we don't want to move anywhere. Yeah. We're in gear one. It's slowly. Slow. Now, let's go back. Jesus being in a cultation, some Muslims don't believe. Oh, no problem. No problem. There are some Muslims don't believe. No problem. I didn't know that until you... There are many who believe. Was he scared? Because I've heard people all mock. And I'm going to try and remain quite calm for the next few nights. Yeah, this is yeah. the time for positivity. Yeah. And San has to be positive. Yep. But some mocked the Mahdi. They said he ran away from a cellar. He ran away from the basement somewhere. Sirdab, these guys are, they're Mahdi scared. Jesus, way. What was the issue? Was he scared? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's saying that we are the ones who have taken him. He's scared? Mm -hmm. No. No, 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 hold on. Because if he is a prophet, macho, brave, valor, sacrifice, they should be ready to fight the destructive, arrogant, hypocritical yeah. empire of his time who mercilessly were willing to kill the lovers of Christ with no hesitation and still claim themselves as people of God. But God said, I'm going to take him. Double standards. I'm going to take him. <laughs> and so... You find Muslims telling Christians, you know what, uh, Jesus didn't die on the cross. Like, you know, God took him. Took him where? Where? Where is he? <sighs> I'd love to meet him. I'd love to meet him. Where is he? Uh, what's the benefit of him being in Ghaiba, by the way? I don't know, what's the benefit? So here's a man who's meant to be a really determined, all al Hazm prophet. Mm -hmm. What's the benefit of him being in Ghaiba? Mm. Where are you? Because um, they mock, they say, yeah, yeah. let him come out. <laughs> What's he doing for you guys? Where, where is Jesus? I beg you tell me. Hey, Jesus, you know, where, where are you hiding, Jesus? Mm -hmm. If you talk like this, it's blasphemous. Mm -hmm. But we are being told that Jesus is an occultation. Yeah. Where? Which world? Which heaven? Which lair? By the way, how old does that make him, Minhan? 2020 thousand years old. years old? Are you crazy, old Muslims? So you believe that there's a man who we can't see who's a couple thousand years of age? So we've established some of these prophets, they were old. Mm -hmm. We established Iblis. He's probably Mr. Old as you get. Mm -hmm. And we've also established that some of these prophets are still alive. Mm. We also need to establish that some of those prophets were alive, but the fact that people couldn't recognize them did not mean that they weren't existing. Sent. Like who? Nabi Yusuf. Mm -hmm. yep. Nabi Yusuf. Nabi Yusuf السلام, was alive. How many days journey between him and his father? A couple of months journey. Just because his brothers didn't recognize him doesn't mean that you could say he's not alive. He's alive, but you don't recognize him. Some of those prophets, Minhal, I know you're not going to believe this. 
Tell me. Oh, Allah, Muslims are unbelievable. Tell me. Tell Wallah, me. the double standards some Muslims have. Oh. Minhan, you're not going to believe this. Tell me. Minhan, are you going to believe this? If it's coming okay, from okay, you, okay, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> Minhan, you got to hear this one. Some it. of these prophets, Muslims actually believe mm -hmm. that their moms weren't showing the signs of pregnancy when they gave birth to them. <laughs> Muslims are unbelievable. <laughs> I want to take my earpiece of Muslims are down. unbelievable. <laughs> they believe, Bilal, Bilal, listen to this. This will crack you up. Muslims believe that Moses, alayhi salam's mom, did not have the signs of pregnancy when she had given birth to Musa. <laughs> Minhan, isn't that outrageous? I'm gonna Do you know how many Muslim lecturers out there Tell you the story that there weren't the signs of pregnancy. You say, why? Because the Pharaoh of that time, Iblis is Khalifa on the earth. Yes. In contrast to the Khalifa of the Rahman, yeah. he was slaughtering those who were newborn males. And therefore, if you are living at a certain period of time where there are certain Abbasid stroke Pharaohic personalities, mm -hmm. Then you know what God does, Minhan? He makes a lady look like she's not even pregnant. And supposedly, this lady gives birth without any signs of pregnancy. Minhan, how absurd is that? I told you I'll take my mic and lay peace off and go. But we believe in it, Minhan, don't we? We believe in it. You know what I love about the Quran when it relates to the Mahdi? Everything the Mahdi is mocked for, the Quran shown can happen. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> your Mahdi, you're saying he's what, 1,400 years old? Yep, your Jesus was uh, is 2,000. <laughs> they say that their Mahdi ran away. It sounds like your Christ ran away. You know what the Shia believe? The Shia believe that their Mahdi, his existence somehow still has a benefit for them. Um, in the same way that Satan, I can't see him but can whisper bad things. Why can I not believe in an existence who exists, who I can't see, who can maybe whisper good? Let's continue, Minha. Let's continue. So where did we reach? Do you know what we eventually reached? What? The greatest prophet of all time. Muhammad. So we reached the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him and his family. Why did it take that long? Mm. Why did it take that long? Good question. Why didn't God just from the beginning give you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? Why did it take so long, Minhal? Ah, maybe because God saw that in the same way a child you don't give them classes in Wordsworth and Joyce mm -hmm. or Orwell or Shakespeare mm -hmm. when they're three, four. You wait until they get to 16 and then you may end up opening up the world of a Joyce or a Orwell or a Wordsworth. And you don't necessarily give a 15-year-old Descartes or Kant mm. or Nietzsche or Schopenhauer. You may wait until they're 21, 22. Mm -hmm. Likewise, in the development of humanity, different messages were needed for different times. The, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have easily put the Holy Prophet from day one. That's it. And that, it's all over. Mm -hmm. We had to wait and wait and wait. And different societies were told, wait. There is a reward in waiting for Ahmed. Mm -hmm. And so the Prophet comes as a mercy to mankind. What is he? Khalifa al Rahman. Imam al Insiwal. Ka'bat al Iman. Shariq al Quran. He is the partner of the Quran. Quran. But even with him, you found. That he sought to establish a system mm -hmm. based on justice. Yeah. Qist, adl. Not zulm and jor. We agree? Mm -hmm. Agree. But he knew he was going to die. Mm -hmm. When he dies, was it the day of judgment? No. No. 
Satan's still going to live. And that would mean that, O oh, Prophet of God, if you're going to leave the world, but you know Shaitan's still around, yeah. if the presence of the satanic element is still there, then there has to be presence of the godly. The godly can be internal, mm -hmm. my intellect, yeah. my belief system. The external, he said, I leave behind for you the Quran and my Ahl al -Bayt. Ahl al -Bayt. He left behind for us guidance. Mm. But even some of the Arabs didn't accept the Quran. Oh, really? Minhal, if you bring up for me Surah 10 verse 20, mm. I want to bring up why another word which is important. This is all equation. We've had Ghayb. Yep. We've had Imam, Khalifa, Hujjah. Had. Had. Bashir. We want to also bring up another word, Muntabar. Muntabar. Sometimes you hear he is called Imam al Mahdi al Muntabar. Muntabar. Mm. The Arabs, even with the Prophet giving the Quran as a guidance for them, they wanted more. They wanted another sign. Read Surah 10, verse 20 for me, if you don't mind, Minhal. It says, and they say, Why is a sign not sent down to him from his Lord? So say, The unseen is only for Allah to administer. So wait, indeed, I am with you amongst those who Allah, wait. Allah, Allah, Allah. So wait, I am? With you. I'm waiting with you. I'm waiting with you, O oh, Prophet of God. What are you waiting for? Minhal, Surah Yunus, verse number 20, is a huge verse in me understanding the meaning of Muntabar. Mm -hmm. I've understood Hujjah. The earth cannot be devoid of a hujjah. Yeah. Straight away he had a khalifa on the earth. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he was called a nabi, a rasul, a imam, a wali, and a person who is of the amr. Mm -hmm. Sahib al-amr, mm -hmm. sahib al-zaman. But minhal, you've introduced me something else. Muntabar. That the prophet is one of the people who believes in a... Muntabar. Because what does the ayah say? These people, when he tells them the Quran is a sign from me. They're like, no, 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 we want something else. So what does he say? Just paraphrase. What does he say? He says, why is, uh, he says the unseen is only for Allah to administer. Unseen is only for Allah to administer. Not the seen. Leave the world of the seen. <laughs> I want to be of the muttaqeen. Yu'minuna bil ghayb. Here in Surah 10, verse number 20, they're telling the Prophet, the Prophet listen, the unseen is only for Allah to administer. I've given you the Quran. You've not accepted the Quran. So if you, you know what you want to do? You want to talk about the unseen? Yeah, so wait, indeed I am with you among those who Wait, waits. indeed I am with you of the waiters. Waiting for who, Ya Rasulullah? You're the best creation of... What are you waiting for? Why are you waiting for? And you are in a process of intibar. Allah. Allah. Therefore, whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is waiting for is equivalent to the Qur'an in terms of its guidance. Mm -hmm. And that means he is one of those who waits for a time where there is someone, and tomorrow I'm going to discuss this, the power of being from the descendants of Fatima. Mm. Allah. Okay. Tomorrow. Allah. Tomorrow. We discuss the descendants of Fatima. And authority in the descendants of Fatima. And how this Islam. Begun with the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Fatima and Ali and Hazrat. And will end with the descendants of Fatima. We didn't need to mess up in the middle. Begin with the house of Fatima. We will end with the house of Fatima tomorrow inshallah. <laughs> what do we have now? Ghayb. Muntabar. Intibar. Khalifa. Imam. Hujjah. We've gone through all the terminologies in hand. Of course. And we've gone through the fact that أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمْ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانَ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطَ At the beginning, you quoted a hadith. <laughs> this is what he's waiting for. The <laughs> Prophet is of those who wait. Imam Zayn al-Abideen is of those who wait. Imam al-Sadiq is of those who wait. All of them talk about a particular waiting, a particular intadar. In one of the shows coming up, we're going to discuss with the viewers, should we sit back and wait or should we be active in waiting? That's coming, inshallah. It's coming. Quote for me that hadith again. Uh, At the beginning of the show, you had that lovely hadith about the Prophet saying, listen, I'm going to go. Mm. But 
This earth, when you reach a day where you're going to see jor and dhulm, oppression and injustice, you're going to see one day it being filled with qist and adl. Please repeat so it again. So the Prophet ﷺ said, the Mahdi will be of my stock and he will have a broad forehead and a prominent nose. He will fill the earth with equity and justice as it was filled with oppression and tyranny and he will rule for seven years. Therefore, Minhal, what do we have over here? We have the fact that he will fill. Who will fill? The Mahdi. Random? No, says the Mahdi. That means that even after Islam was completed with the Prophet, peace be upon him, his family, mm -hmm. there remains a member of his family who ensures that the purest Islam, the Islam of justice, for human beings and equity is there a world will be filled filled by who ya allah i thought rasulullah it was that it was the end no there is another one to come don't worry the same way ibrahim and his family were blessed muhammad and his family are blessed by me as well al mahdi therefore gives us hope positivity Promise of hope is the promise that the righteous shall inherit the earth. Surah 21, verse 105 of the Quran, Minhal. Read it for me, please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And we have already written in the book of Psalms, after the previous mention that the land of paradise is inherited by my righteous servants. We have written where? In the Zabur, Psalms. The Zabur, Psalms. We have written in the Psalms, mm -hmm. we've written in other religious works that this earth, the meek shall inherit it. Don't worry. Mm. Look at the beauty, the beauty that this earth that we live in will be inherited by the meek, the righteous shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. Those Ibadullah al salihin al salihin Ya Aba Saleh. Ya Aba Saleh. Ya Aba Saleh. Likewise, Allah promises that those leaders, those who were deemed weak on the earth, Allah will make them leaders, inheriting one another. Surah 28, verse number 5, Minhal. These, by the way, are all verses to the viewers who ask me, are there verses of the Holy Quran whose tafsir may be relating to a particular moment in Mecca and Medina, but whose ta'wil goes towards the Iman? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, chapter 28, verse 5, it says, And we wanted to confer favor upon those who are oppressed in the land and make them leaders and make them inheritors. Beautiful. Not just that, Minhal, but we also reach the stage where Allah has promised the way Adam was my Khalifa, then at the end I'll ensure that I have my Khalifa on the earth, Ma'soom. But for a group of people who want justice to be established. They want the Qist and the Adala, they don't want the Jor and the Fasad to be what is the norm. Surah 24 verse 55, Minhal, tell us. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah has promised those who have believed among you and done righteous deeds, that he will surely grant them succession to authority upon the earth, just as he granted it to those before them, and that he will surely establish for them therein their religion, which he has preferred for them, and that he will surely substitute for them after their fear, security for their fall. They worship me, not associating anything with me, but whoever disbelieves after that, then those are the divinely Surah 24 verse 55 is a promise of hope, peace, mm. and a promise that those of you who are unfair, do not worry. Don't worry. Therefore, the Prophet, peace be upon his family, before he died, he left a genre of literature that there are signs of the Day of Judgment. Mm -hmm. And before the Day of Judgment, there is a man from my family who we will discuss tomorrow night, Shabu. who will ensure that justice is established. Mm -hmm. And he will rule the rule of God on earth. Mm -hmm. And that he will ensure that the promise that there will always be a proof of God on the earth mm -hmm. is a promise that is fulfilled. Join me tomorrow night where we begin to look in all the schools of Islam about the hadiths about the Mahdi. Where is he originally from? 
how Fatima al Zahra at the beginning and at the end is fundamental and his mission as well as going on to his birth and the discussion concerning it. Ah, Sentum Sayyidna, uh, just, how, just as you're excited for this, I am even more excited. The way you wait for your favorite TV series every week, you can just minhan, wait minhan, another day. Minhan, they believe in a man called Nuh who lived for a couple of thousand years and they believe in Musa's mother that she never had the size of pregnancy and they believe that shaitan you can't see. Would you believe this? Yes, it's true. <laughs> Now, whatever sect you follow, the traditions on the Mahdi are in great numbers. Um, before we end, I w uh, would like to give a special mention. Um, if we can all uh, come together and recite a Surah Al-Fatiha for the late Marhumeen, uh, uh, Brother Hsien Ibn Siham, uh, Farmaz Iftikhar Zadeh, and Abbas Hsien, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise them with the Imam of our time, insha'Allah. But do join us tomorrow, same time, as we delve into this broad topic and all the questions will be answered. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.